Hey guys, Bicebump here, excited to bring you the Shadowlands pre-patch Frost Guide. Today I will cover everything you need to know in order to play Frosty Case in Shadowlands pre-patch. I will include stuff like the changes that comes with us. I will talk about 200 versus dual wheel builds. I will talk about talents, rotations, asteroid, SSS, as well as trinkets. It's everything you need to know in order to optimally play the Frost Death Knight in the Shadowlands pre-patch. So to start off, let's look at the changes. We have gotten quite a lot of new abilities actually. First of all, we have Lichborn. This used to be a PvT, PvP talent. It's now baseline. It gives you 10% leech, which is quite nice for survivability, as well as making you immune to charm, fit and sleep. This is very useful in raiding settings where you can dodge abilities, where you can pop this if you accidentally get feared from something. It's just very useful. Furthermore, it makes you undead, and I'll get to why that's useful later on. Anti-Magic Zone, another PvP ability, now baseline. 20% magical DR is extremely powerful in both a raiding setting and a dungeon setting. Right? This is a big, big increase to the utility we can bring to any kind of group comp, and you should all be very happy that this is now baseline. Some other new abilities, Death Coil used to be an unholy ability, it's now back to Frost. It deals less damage and costs more than Frost Strike, so don't use this for damage. However, you can use this to heal yourself if you're undead. And if you remember what I said earlier, Lich Ball makes you undead. So, if you're away from the boss, you can't use Death Strike to heal up yourself. You can pop down Lich Ball and start spamming Death Call to heal yourself. Can be very, very useful, useful in niche scenarios but it won't be used that often. Another unholy ability is Death and Decay, also blood ability. It's not baseline for us. Uh, it doesn't synergize with anything in the pre-patch, but it deals an okay amount of AoE damage, so if you're fighting lots of enemies, like 5+, plus, just pop this down. It's, it's quite worth for the one rune it costs. We have a new race dead. This also comes from the Unholy DK's arsenal. It's not permanent though. We, we pop it, it's a one minute pet that helps us fight. It's a single target, burst CD, with quite a lot of uptime. Just press it, it doesn't synergize with anything. It's just, you know, macro it's something, I don't know. All right. We also got five new rune forges. Rune of Hysteria, Sanguination, Apocalypse, Unending of Thirst, as well as spell warding. The only one that's actually interesting for us is Hysteria. It makes it so that we get more resources in the rotation. This is specifically good for Breakfast in Nagosa. However, it's not that great. It's not as good as the other forces we have. We might see it played, but I don't think so. Generally, none of the new forces are good enough to be picked, all right? We pick Rune Eraser Eyes, as well as Rune of the Fallen Crusader. Maybe the largest change for us is that we can now wield two-handed weapons. This is something that's coming back from Warlords of Drenna. Hasn't been in the game in both in neither Legion nor BFA. Uh, lots of people are very happy about this. Two-handed weapons will um, create more diversity and will create some more some new interesting playstyles. It's quite exciting to look at and figure out what to use and when to use it. So it's, it's quite a uh, it's an interesting change for sure. Uh, we have a new uh, passive, which comes in conjunction with this uh, two-handed weapon change. It's Might of the Frozen Wastes. And this has been in the game previously. Currently, it makes it so that when you wield a dual wield weapon. Your abilities hit by both with, with both the main hand and the off hand. This is something you get quite early in the leveling process. Furthermore, it makes it so that your obliterate still 30% more damage if you, have, if you have a two-hander, and it makes it so that killing machine procs more often. Just to uh, clarify what procs more often means, to start off, killing machine itself was changed in patch 8.2. It used to be a an RPPM mechanic. They change it so that it's actually based on the number of crit orders you've done since your previous last previous proc. 
Alright, first time you get a crit auto, you have a 30% chance of getting a killing machine. If you don't get it, the second time you got a 60% chance. If you don't get it, you got 9% and 100%. So you can't get more than 4 crit autos in a row without getting a killing machine proc. This increased proc rate means that for two-handed weapons, the first crit is a 70% chance, the second one is a 100% chance, right? So you can't get more than two crit autos in a row without getting a killing machine proc for two-handed weapons. However, two-handed weapons hit slowly, right? They've got a 3.6 second swing timer, dual wheel weapons have 2.4, so they attack 2.7 times faster if you count both the weapons compared to uh, two-hander. This means that dual wheels still get 8% more natural killing machine procs of the crit autos. Great. Some more changes. We got Frostworm's Fury. Now baseline. Lovely change. Really fun ability and great burst coming from that one. We got Obliterate damage being quite heavily nerfed in the pre-patch. This is most likely done to balance out the spec in Shadowlands. Since we have two new passives coming into when we level, both Obliterate rank 2 and Killing Machine rank 2 significantly buff the overall damage we get from Obliterate. But in the pre-patch, Obliterate damage is down a bit and that will affect our talent builds. Uh, Pillar Frost and Empower Rune Weapon, both of the GCD, lovely change, we like it when stuff that aren't that very impactful when you press it are off the GCD. Uh, specifically Empower Rune Weapon. It, without the uh, GCD opportunity cost of using that ability, we can actually use it a bit later in Breath of Sinagosa, as long as we have the resources uh, necessary to not uh, drop it too early. Generally, if your breath lasts longer than 20 seconds, it's probably better to use Empower Room Weapon a bit later compared to earlier. Uh, Pillar Frost is now... Uh, Pillar Frost has changed quite a lot. It's now 20% strength instead of 15%. It's now 1 minute cooldown and now 12 seconds duration as well as the GCD change. So a couple of positive changes, you know, increased strength, GCD no longer on the GCD. A couple of negative ones, we have 1 minute instead of 45 seconds cooldown. We have the uh, 12 second instead of 15 second duration. Uh, overall, I think it's a bit of a nerf. Specifically, it's, it nerfed uh, ice cap builds and obliteration builds because they, those two relied quite heavily on uh, Pillar of Frost being a bit lower cool, uh, cooldown. Uh, it's not quite nice for Breath since uh, one minute cooldown on Pillar makes it so that the two minute cooldown on Breath aligns everything nicely. Uh, something which has been quite annoying in BFA, honestly. Uh, we have Glacier Advance. It now actually does what it says on the tooltip, right? Previously, you needed to have uh, Bracerize uh, Rune Forge on one of your weapons for Gla Glacial Advantage to actually apply Bracerize. That's no longer the case. So, if you have a two handed weapon, you uh, have Fallen Crusade on that two handed weapon, you can now use Glacial Advance to apply Bracerize to your targets. That is actually, it does seem to be an upgrade on single target, but it's not that big an upgrade. So, I don't think we're going to pick Glacial Advance for a single target increase. Really. There's, there's other options which are better. Frost Scythe is capped at 5 targets, big scaling nerf, it's still useful though, right? Uh, it doesn't scale past 5 targets but it still does good damage. It also applies race to all targets hit which is quite a significant damage increase. Uh, it's worse at applying to all targets though, so you know, generally it has been nerfed but it's still useful in Mythic Plus for instance. Breath and Howling Blast follow the square root formula. It was previously, for Breath of Sinagosa, it was 100% damage on first target, 30% on all other. For Howling Blast, it was 100% on first target, 50% on all other. It now follows the square root formula, which essentially scales quite nicely at the first couple targets, but then drops off and kind of goes flat after a while. It's flattish. Uh, in practice, Breath of Sinagosa has been buffed in AoE up to 11 targets, nerfed out past that. Howling Blast is buffed up to 4 targets and nerfed afterwards. So uh, both talents are now better at lower target counts and worse at higher target counts. But Breath of Sinagosa is quite better like in all cases really, because fighting 11 targets, that's quite a lot of targets. Final change I want to cover, Ice Cap has been buffed, it's now 4 seconds instead of 3 seconds. However, 
Pillar Frost cool language now longer, and we lose corruptions. To this talent, it's generally worse in the pre-patch compared to what it was in BFA. It's quite significantly worse actually, and that's mostly because of the, the corruption change. Okay, so now to a very important question which many people have been asking. In the Shadowlands pre-patch, which is better, dual wield or two-hander? The simple answer is dual wield and quite easily dual wield. But let's 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 dive deeply into this specific uh, two-hander versus dual wield issue and look at what's good with two-hander, what's good with dual wield, and why does one win out over the other? So first of all, the most the, the largest difference and the most critical one has to do with the number of rune forges you can use. Two-hander weapons can use a single one, dual wield can use two, and that's significant because a single rune forge is something like a 10% damage increase so just off the bat dual wield is 10% ahead because of the rune forges so now it comes to all right can the other things that are good for 200 weigh up this 10% difference first of all a couple spells scale better with 200 weapons compared to dual wield there's like a 5% difference and it includes stuff like Cold Heart, Frostwind's Fury, uh, Frost Scythe, just a couple. So 5% increase, that's quite nice. Uh, the biggest increase comes from Might of the Frozen Wastes, obviously. You got 30% more damage on your Obliterates. This is what will uh, bridge the gap the most. Alright, when we can make the most use of those 30% extra damage Obliterates, that's when Two-Hander will come close and possibly surpass uh, dual wield. The specific build that can do this is obliteration. Obliteration makes it so that obliterate is a larger percentage of your overall damage and that gives the best opportunity really for two-hander to win out against dual wield. The issue is that in the pre-patch obliteration is simply not very good and that's why two-hander just falls short. We will get two things when we level towards Shadowlands, which will help with us. Obliterate rank 2, more obliterate damage. Killing Machine rank 2, obliterate deals frost damage when it comes to Killing Machine procs. So, this Killing Machine rank 2, that's absolutely huge. First of all, if you crit with obliterate on a Killing Machine proc versus a regular crit, there's like two, two times the difference, right? If you do 200 damage with normal crit, you deal 400 damage with Killing Machine crit. And that's one, because we deal frost damage, which isn't reduced by armor, and two, because frost damage in is increased by mastery. So those two together makes it so that our killing machine obliterate crits just hits so heavily. And obliteration helps with increasing this amount of killing machine procs. And that's generally why it's so powerful and why it will be much better in the actual Shadowlands. But as I previously mentioned, in the pre-patch, obliterate two-hander just simply falls short. It's no, uh, it's not even close, I'd say, which is a bit unfortunate, but don't despair. Shadowlands will buff two-hander builds significantly, trust me. Okay, so let's talk about talents and rune forges. Start off, what I have in front of you here, this is the duo wield Breath of Syndragosa build. First talent row, we pick Cold Heart, like we've done us in the past. It scales nice with the mastery, and this build stacks quite a lot of mastery. Uh, it's great single target first, and it just provides the most single target output. Second row, we pick Runic Attenuation. Uh, this provides the most Runic power, which is useful, since that will help us prolong our Breath of the Goza windows the most, which results in the most amount of damage. For the fire row, we could pick from Frozen Pools. This is just the, the most damaged output out of the three. Uh, scales nicely with dual with weapons, because we've got two weapons, which means two Frozen Pulses every time we hit, right? Uh, for the fire row, we pick Gathering Storm. Hypothermic Presence, you know, that's, that's a potential pick, but it simply doesn't do enough for us to be worth it, right? Uh, Gathering Storm, it's just, if you price too much single target damage, and that's it. Glacial Advance is actually now useful on single target. It will increase your single target damage, but only in a specific scenario. And that's if you don't pick Razor Eyes on your 
one of your weapons and instead run something like Fallen Crusader and Rune of Hysteria and then use Glacier Advance to put up Racer Eyes. Thing is, that's not really worth it, which means it, it's just not enough of an upgrade and Glacier Advance is therefore not a good pick in single target. We pick Ga Gathering Storm, it's just too good. Final Talent Row, uh, Obliteration is not that great in pre-patch because we don't have Killing Machine level 58 uh, upgrade. Ice cap is quite nerfed, you know, it's short, it's 4 seconds instead of 3 seconds, but Pillar Frost is 1 minute cooldown, Pillar Frost is slightly weaker, and uh, we don't have corruptions. This makes it so that Breath of Sinragosa is the go-to talent in the pre-patch, it, it will be the best pick if you want to optimise your damage output. For two-hander builds, I would go a very similar one. But instead of frozen poles, I pick avalanche in the fortified row, and this is generally because two hand weapons attack 2.7 times less frequently compared to dual wheel weapons, which makes the frozen poles just deals a lot less damage. So what you do is that you pick avalanche instead. It deals okay damage. It's not great, but it's still good enough. Uh, Runic attenuation actually uh, scales tiny bit worse for two-hander but the difference is negligible it's like four percent difference so uh it's still really good i recommend breath of Sinagosa for do two-hander in the shadowlands pre-patch as well to give some more comments uh we don't want to pick ice cap because ice cap doesn't synergize well with two-hander weapons mostly because it synergizes quite nicely with dual wield so you, whenever you crit with frost strike and obliterate it gives the cdr the thing is that if you have two weapons if you hit obliterate either could crit okay so if weapon the first weapon doesn't crit the second one could that doesn't happen for two-hander it just got one opportunity dual will got two opportunities every time and as i previously mentioned uh, dual will got more killing machine procs and killing machines procs are guaranteed ice cap cdrs so yeah, 200 just doesn't work well with uh, Ice Cap. And then Obliteration, that's obviously the 200 uh, talent, but it doesn't work well in the pre-patch because we don't have those extra abilities we need to, to buff it. Right, we've got those at level 52 and 58. For the Ice Cap uh, raid build, we pick Murderous Effic Efficiency instead of Runic Attenuation in the 25 row. Also, if you really want to run two-hander ice cap, which I don't recommend you do, you will pick Avalanche instead of Frozen Pulse. Okay, for uh, Mythic Plus, uh, the build is very similar. If you're running a Breath build, we pick Frost Scythe in the third fire row. That's pretty much the only difference. Uh, same thing goes for two-hander. If you want to run an ice cap build in Mythic Plus, we pick Ice Cap and Murderous Efficiency, and then keep everything else the same. Okay. So that's all your uh, raid builds and your Mythic Plus builds for both two-hander and dual wield. All right, so let's talk about the Frost Death Knight rotation in the pre-patch. And the thing is that it's exactly the same as it was in BFA. So we got a core rotation of four abilities. We got Obliterate, which we spend our runes on. We got Frost Strike, which we spend runic power on. We have Howling Blast, which applies our dots, and which we use every time we get a Rhyme proc. And we've got Remorseless Winter, which we use on cooldown. Uh, if you play with Ice Cap, that's pretty much it. Right? You will use your Pillar of Frost on cooldown as much as you can, and then you just use these four abilities continuously. Uh, with Breath of Sinner Ghost, it's a bit more tricky. Right? We need to build up Runic Power for our Breath of Sinner Ghost window. We need to make sure we have the correct priority once we pop down Breath of Sinragosa, and it just makes it a bit more complicated. So here I will showcase the, the opener when we're using the Breath of Sinragosa talent. What I'll do is that I'll start off by using the three obliterates. I'll use Howling Blast if I get a Rhyme proc. Uh, after that I will use a macro, which does m many things. Uh, it will pop down uh, Pillar of Frost, it will use Breath of Sinragosa, it will use Empower Room Weapon, and it will use Raise Dead. So all those are built, are built at the same time. Uh, the thing is, I need to use Empower Room Weapon with Breath of Sinagosa because I'm going to 
uh, attack this zombie without bloodlust. Um, I don't have the memory of lucid dreams uh, essence equipped, which makes it so that my breath window will be quite uh, low in duration. Uh, if you, in a raid setting with lost and everything, you can wait with a power room weapon a little bit uh, in order to maximize the, the breath of Sinagosa duration. Once I pop down breath of Sinagosa, I'm going to use uh, Remorseless Winter and I'm also going to hard cast Howling Blast in case I haven't gotten my dot off already. That's actually an upgrade, uh, but it's quite unlikely that it happens. Anyway, let's. Furthermore, uh, at the end of my Pillar Frost window, I will use Cold Heart and I will use Frost Frost Fury. Right, let's take a look at that uh, in action. So, I walk up, I do three obliterates. I use Howling Blast when I get that. I use my macro. I use Remorseless Winter and then I start using obliterates. Howling Blast is about to go up. I use my Frost and Fury. I use Cold Heart. And I just keep going. I'm just spamming my obliterate here, hoping for a proc so that I can keep going. All right, breath window goes down, and I'll use Howling Blast, Frost Strike, Remorseless Winter, and Obliterate. Alright. Great. So that was the, the opener for the breath build. Uh, if you're running Ice Cap, just start off by using uh, Pillar of Frost instantly, use your Race Dad, uh, wait, a, wait a couple seconds and you use Empire Rune Weapon and just go about your normal rotation. Alright, quick quick comment on uh, on Cold Heart, cold heart usage. Uh, Pillar of Frost is now one minute cooldown, which means that you don't get this nice lining up every Pillar of Frost with 20 stacks on Cold Heart as we used to, uh, specifically for Breath and Sinagosa. So what we want to do is use Cold Heart at the end of the first Pillar of Frost and then use it once in between each Pillar of Frost after that as well with each Pillar. So you would use one after a couple of, you know, 15 seconds or something and then you would use another one between 12 and 15 stacks. Uh, try to line up before the Crusader, don't go much higher than 15 stacks. And then once Pillar of Frost comes up, use it at the end of that Pillar and then you just keep going that way. Uh, with the Ice Cap, it lines up quite nicely. You can use uh, cold art at the end of each pillar, since the pillar uh, duration is quite sh and pillar cooldown is quite short. All right, so over to the A rotation. It's the same as BFA, but I'm still going to go through it. We have a much larger emphasis on using frost scythe, which I recommend picking in all mythic class scenarios. Essentially, for the, the base rotation, will be frost scythe. It will be remorseless, remorseless winter and howling blast. Frost Strike is kind of not in there because it's fine to overcap on Ruining Power. You kind of don't need to use Frost, Frost Strike, but there will be a situation where you can't use anything else and then you will use Frost Strike. Uh, essentially, just spam away on Frost Scythe, use uh, Remorseless Winter off cooldown, use Howling Blast whenever you get a Rhyme Proc. Uh, for Breath of Sinagosa, we set up similarly. Instead of using Obliterate, though, we're going to use Frost Scythe to build our Runic Power. We're going to set off uh, the breath with a power rune weapon and some little ghoul and some pillar of frost. Uh, we're going to use cold heart and frost and fury at the end of pillar of frost. Thing is that in our breath window we use frost scythe unless we're below 50 runic power where we use obliterate instead. So we use obliterate below 50 runic power to try and extend our breath as long as possible. Pretty much just using frost scythe doesn't give you enough runic power to keep, uh, keep your breath going for long enough. I'm going to start off by using a Naked Howling Blast here. You don't need to do that if you have Frozen Tempest as a trait. Then you just get the, the free Howling Blast Rhyme proc of your uh, Remorseless Winter. Uh, I use Remorseless Winter after the Howling Blast and then I just go into Frost Scythe Spam. And then once I'm uh, out of runes, I pop down my Breath of Goza and go ham. Let's take a look at what that looks like in practice. So I start off by Howling Blast, Remorseless Winter into Frost Scythe Spam until I'm out of runes. When I'm out of runes, I go into my breath window here, and then I just keep standing, spamming Frost Scythe. I keep track of my uh, Pillar Frost buff, so it's about to go up, so I pop down Frostman's Fury, Cold Heart, keep spamming Frost Scythe using my Howling Blast and Rhyme Procs. When I drop below, as I say, I use Obliterate to keep 
Keep me healthy. Keep that breath going. Alright, and once it's over, I just go into the normal rotation. I'm also Swinter, spamming Frost Scythe. Hey, I can't use Frost Scythe, so I use Frost Strike. But other than that, I just spam Frost Scythe. Again, Frost Strike, and then Frost Scythe spam. For Azerite, we have uh, different priorities depending on build and situation. So for single target raiding, Breath Synagosa, we want to go Icy Citadel and Heart of Darkness, as well as Frozen Tempest. Okay, Icy Citadel is the most important one, and then you can pick and choose between Heart of Darkness and Frozen Tempest. If you're running Ice Cap, there's Icy Citadel again, Heart of Darkness, and then you can also choose the wrong Frostwell, Frostwell Indignation. That specifically scales uh, in AoE fight, but is also a good pick for single targets. For Mythic Plus, again, Icy Citadel is the go-to. It's simply so powerful for single targets, you don't really want to go away from it. Heart of Darkness works great, Frozen Tempest works great, and Frostwell works great. If you're running Ice Cap, there's a lot more focus on Frostwell, so kind of 3 Icy Citadel plus 3 Frostwell is a really good combination. You can choose to run 1 Frozen Tempest to get that free Rhyme proc in AoE. Right, for Essences, it's quite simple. Uh, the Major, you can run Blood and the Enemy, both in Raids and Mythic Plots. Works great for any build. It's very versatile, very good Essence. For Miners, we have Memory of Lucid Dream, we have uh, Conflict and Strife, and we have Crucible. And those three also work very well in any given situation. So. Blood of the Enemy Major, Lucid, Conflict and Strife, and Crucible, and those are your essences. Finally, let's talk about Trinkets. Uh, first of all, Breath of Sinagosa. That build uses a very specific set of Trinkets. The, the best Trinket is actually a Shara Font of Power. That's from the previous raid here. So hopefully you got a nice Titan Charge one. It's fine it's a bit, if it's a bit lower eye level. But ideally you want it to be as high as possible because it's already at a eye level deficit compared to the uh, relevant trinkets in this tier. You pair that with another nice on use such as the Vile and the Blade of Blood, you got Gladiator's Badge, you got Gladiator's Medallion, all great picks. If you don't have Ashara Font Power, you can just use a simple on use as you know Badge, Medallion or Vial plus something like Vita Shard or Titan Shard. Using Ashara Font of Power is a bit tricky. Use it uh, pre-pull on before you engage a pull, and then you use your second on use as soon as that 20 second internal trinket CD uh, is gone. That allows you to have two trinkets active within your breath window, and which is why that's kind of why Ashara's font power is so strong because the effect lasts for 30 seconds. Uh, for all other breaths, you use Ashara font power 10 seconds before the breath window, and then you use your second on use 10 seconds in the breath window and that allows you again to have two trinkets active at the same time. For ice cap it's much easier for trinkets you use Vita Shard, Titan Shard plus Humming Black Dragon Scale. You get both from raid, you, sh you probably have them at high level, uh, just work great, work well. Alright so that was everything I wanted to cover about the uh, Frost Death Knight in the Shadowlands pre-patch. Please feel free to pop a comment down below if you have any questions. I'm also always on the Acris Discord so you can always ask me a question over there as well. Um, as I said, I hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned for more content. Thank you.